So good morning, and good morning. we're going to have a conversation today with uh, a friend and neighbor, Alice Flynn, who lives on Layton Avenue with her husband, Bob Flynn. Alice, thank you very much for being with us today for a quick conversation here. Um, I'd like to begin by just having you tell us just a little, a little bit about who you are, whether you're working, retired, just a, a few basics here. Okay, um, I'm retired, thank goodness, at this point. Uh, I have been, we have been living here in Southampton for 45 years or something, and I worked at Southampton College for 32 of those years, and then continued to work for LIU, but in the city, and I retired a year and a half ago. Okay. Or, yeah, about like that. So, you've been retired for a while, so possibly being at home is not a, a novel thing for you, but I would imagine this is quite a, a a, a different experience for you. Um, can you tell us just a little bit about how you and your husband are set up living? How do you how do you spend your days? Do, uh, do you have a routine? Is it has it changed from before? Well, it it's definitely changed, but not drastically. It's weird because you know, we're so lucky to be in a house that we like, in a neighborhood that's walkable and with nice neighbors. And, and you know, we are both retired. So, um, it, you know, we do, <laughs> he reads the entire paper now instead of, you know, a <laughs> portion of it and waits to do the crossword. And uh, I've been doing, you know, I don't know, it's weird. My day fills up completely but I have no idea I'm doing zoom yoga with uh, through the library which is wonderful and I decided to start practicing the piano because I have one and haven't played since I was 11 and um, you know you do things around the house we we drive out to Remsenburg to see our kids who our daughter and her family live there and we kind of you know sit stay six feet away and wear our masks and about once a week and I don't know how Tell us a, a tiny bit about your volunteer project. The the postcard thing? No, the oh. protective gear. Pardon me, that was what? The protective gear that you... Oh, oh yeah, that was great. Thanks to you, we were looped into this project to help put together the plastic surgical gowns for the hospital and we did a bunch of those <laughs> we had a nice rhythm going and we did i don't know we did several bins of them and it was just it just felt so good to help out with that and that was through kenny wright and uh, michael riley it was wonderful that was a large undertaking with what how many volunteers i can't remember but they did we did like ten thousand gowns or something and yeah. we'd get bins of 40 at a time so you know there was and it only took us, uh, I think we only did it for like three weeks. So they had quite a number of volunteers, obviously, to get that all done in time. It was great. It was so ingenious the way they came up. Serious volunteer commitment that was, I know, it was very much appreciated by the hospital. Well, it was, it made us all feel good too. Yeah. Now doing postcards, we get voters out in different parts of the country. It's, po it's uh, Postcards to Vote. It's a great organization. So I was just writing some postcards this morning. It's terrific. So do you, I mean, it sounds as though you've more or less adjusted to whatever the new normal yeah. is for you. Yeah, I feel like we have adjusted pretty well. We take a walk on the beach every day. We take our dog, we walk on the beach. I've heard from people from all over, from years back. I mean, old, old friends, ex-students. I mean, it's just been amazing as far as that goes. I think people are really, you know, really um, thinking about people in their lives. And this has made everyone sort of, well, made a lot of people uh, start to treasure the things that you know matter to them over the years, and that's been really rewarding. and And I've done it too. I've reached out to people uh, that I haven't talked to in a long time to just say, you know, how are you? And it's been that's been really a cool and different thing to this. You know, I mean, who knew? I think you're not alone. I mean, it's kind of ironic because in this time of extreme physical separation, which I'm sure must be hard in many ways people really are finding that their, their relationships have deepened and um, they are paying more attention to them. It sounds as if you are as well. Yeah, and um, Bobby and I are having, we're, we're so glad we get along. <laughs> 
because, you know, that could be awful. But we've been having, you know, we, we've done some jigsaw puzzles, which we never in our lives had done. And they're kind of fun. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I think in, in general, there's, thank God for the Internet. That's all I can say. Email, Zoom, FaceTime, you know, it just, it makes it so different from if we were in our homes with no, nothing but our landlines, you know, or. Right. Um, do you find that you have developed routines that you sort of stick to that help you get through this time or, or don't you have that situation in your household? Well, you know, we didn't really change the basic routines. Like every day I, you know, get up, shower and put on clothes. I don't stay in pajamas all day or any of that stuff. Um, you know, Bobby does the same. And, uh, and then we do what we all, you know, like I always did my email in the morning. He always read the paper, you know, that kind of stuff hasn't really changed that much. Okay. The walking every day has been good for us. And we've been doing that. And, you know, some of these other things I mentioned, um, like playing the piano or I've worked in the garden a little more than I may be. You know, the weather's been so lousy really for the most part that been... getting out there has been challenging, but you know, we're, we're just trying to get through. Yeah. Are you uh, cooking more? Um, well, I don't really cook, Bobby does, um, but he's been making great meals. <laughs> I'm, as a matter of fact, that's a good reason to put on my clothes every day so I make sure I haven't, you know, ballooned too much. Um, but yeah, we've been eating really well. <laughs> uh, and we always had a packed pantry, so we've been, and we always, you know, cook and save leftovers and eat them several times during the week yeah. and freeze leftovers and all that. So that's been going on still. Do you... If you had to think about what you missed the most, could you come up with something? Yes, I could. I could come up with hugging my grandchildren. <laughs> you know, I I go there and they're so dear and, you know, just still, they, they run over and then they remember and the little one is two plus and, and she's about to be three and she says, oh, I forgot everybody's sick, <laughs> which is how they've explained to her why she shouldn't, you know. Right. But it's, it's that part's bad. And we were also, you know, we were about to leave the week this all hit and the quarantine started. We were on, leaving on a road trip to visit our other daughter in Texas. So we don't know when we're going to see them again. And they don't either. And they're all very worried about it. You know, right. so there are those things that I've missed. Yeah. Just a quick word about uh, your experience being ill in January and thinking that could possibly have been a very early case of this. Just yeah. Quickly tell us that. Quickly, we had all the symptoms. We both got sick right in the first week of January. And I, you know, I really never even get cold. So to be laid up and out straight, and we both went to the doctor, which to get Bobby to go to the doctor is like a miracle. And they both, the doctor was like, yeah, I think bronchitis, but, you know, we even lost our sense of taste and commented on it at the time. I'd never heard of coronavirus, never heard about that. But I, you know, I'm not, I just took an antibody test. I'm not certain it'll come back. Uh, with anything I'll believe either way so who knows well you could be one of the first cases in Southampton <laughs> citizen zero was, was <laughs> patient zero I hope not I don't want to be the one spread <laughs> we're going to start getting some noises outside I hear the leaf blowers so Allison just a, a couple of um, minutes just tell us what what you see as the possible silver lining in all of this for you. It's, it, you've expressed some of it, I believe. For me personally or for like society? You. Well, uh, both. What would be? I kind of think it has been good to um, remove myself just a little bit from so much activity uh, in my life, you know, like always doing something and being busy. I mean, it's kind of nice to be home as my, one of my grandchildren and my grandson called it a quarantation. Well, it's of course not a vacation, but it does feel in some ways uh, nice to sort of slow down, be home, uh, you know, look at some of the stuff around us and say, you know, this is good. This isn't, let's, you know, be in touch with people. Let's practice the piano. Let's, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. I mean, I think just that, that calming has not been terrible. And I hope, I hope that remains. I have heard that sentiment expressed by others and you put it beautifully and I'm glad you're safe and doing well and making the most of a, you know, difficult situation here. Alice, thank you so much for talking to us today. Thank you, Pat. I can't wait for you to be able to come over again, hang around. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next New Year's. Oh, my God. <laughs>
Okay. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye.